It's not showing up. Oh, I bet you it's... No, someone's there. Why is this not showing up on TV? Hey, y'all, what's up? It's me, it's me. It is Everything Fresh and Sassy. How are you? I hope all is well with you. I do. Mind, body, spirit, and in health. So, I'm... Um, look. I thought I didn't have sound on the other one because I was trying to listen to it from another device and I couldn't hear anything. So now I'm back and I started another stream, but it's not playing. So first I thought I didn't have sound, but I did have sound. Now I don't have a picture. All I have, look. That's all I got. It says tikka masala, butter chicken, waiting for everything, fresh and sassy. January 3, 8.07 p.m., and it says one waiting. But I have no picture. So first there was no sound, or so I thought, and now there's no picture. And I couldn't have gotten a thumbs up if nobody was there and nobody saw. What is happening? I don't want to do this video. I didn't want to finish the other video because I thought there was no sound. And then I would have been mad because I did a whole video and there was no sound. But there was sound. Now, when I start the new stream, there's no picture. What the heck? <laughs> and I can't go to the other one because I closed that one out. And I, don't, I can't reopen it. Why is it not playing? What's, what, what is the problem? Um, schedule for one three twenty four at eight oh seven. Well, it's eight fifteen. Why won't it play? Oh, wait, I see it. Okay, hold on. There's two. All right, I see it. There's three. One, two, three. Okay, so go to... I can't delete it on the TV, so... Go to the third one. I can't delete there it. There we go! <laughs> go to the third one. I'm sorry, y'all. There we go! <laughs> Alright, turn it down. Sorry, I got sound now, and I got picture. I don't know why there's three. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Turn this down a little bit. All right, so I'm going to leave that one because I've done a few videos where I didn't have it. Hey, Miss Stop, Drop, and Roll on. Thank you so much. Listen, let me greet you all well, well. This is I Am Everything Fresh and Sassy. How are you? I hope all is well with you. I do mind, body, spirit, and in health. It is January 3rd, 2024, and it is Wednesday. And as I said in the other video, I am now here officially 61 years. Yay me. <laughs> so I celebrated my 61st birthday on January 1st. Okay. All right. So anyway, as you saw in the title, I'm going to be making one of my granny's favorite, favorite foods. Um, my grandkids love my chicken, butter chicken, or also known as tiki masala. So that's what we're making tonight. 
I had not made it in two years because number one, I used to put like two or three tablespoons of sugar in the recipe and I can't tolerate any sugar now. I can't tolerate any flour um, without getting very, 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 very ill. So um, I just didn't make it because I figured it wasn't going to be the same because I believe the recipe does call for bechamel and because I can't do flour, I can't use the bechamel. So I said, I'm going to make it and I'm going to eliminate those two things, but it's going to be good and it was so good. It was so good, I had to do it again and share it with you. Okay, so here we go. We're going to get started. Um, the first thing I want to do is to um, start my yams and peppers. Um, when I want something sweet, it's the yams for me. And I, I, I have become a connoisseur of yams. So we're going to talk about that in another video. So I'm going to put my yams, which I have already washed, okay, I've already washed my yams. Wait a minute, no, these are sweet potatoes, not yams, but I've already washed them, scrubbed them. Let me stop lying. I didn't wash them. My daughter washed them. <laughs> Thank you, baby. All right, so I got four big yams, sweet potatoes here. These are the red what they call also, what do they call these? Um, the jewel sweet potatoes. So I just take them, scrub them up really good. I don't put any oil on the skin. I don't cover them. I leave the skin on and they're going in a 450 degree oven for about one hour and 50 minutes or two hours. Now when they're really small, you can get away with doing about 45 minutes and they're done and they're very, very good. So we're going to set that for 155. Wait. Timer. One. Five. Why is it doing that? One. Five. Five. Timer is on. Okay. Now when they're small, like these, you can get away with 45 minutes. And I got these because that's all they had left. I prefer the big ones. They need to be at least that big, if not bigger, okay? So I'm gonna put those in the oven, and then I have to put some bell peppers in the oven. I like my bell peppers roasted. You don't have to roast them, but it really adds another layer of flavor to your tiki masala, and it sweetens the tiki masala because, again, I used to put sugar in there, and because I'm not using sugar, I have to fake my way, so I use roasted peppers in my tiki masala, okay? And I got two yellow, one orange. That's going in the oven with the, um, with the sweet potatoes. However, roasting the uh, peppers only takes about 15 to 20 minutes. You wanna see like some burnt spots on your peppers. The outside of your peppers should look like they've been singed or burned a little bit. And when it's like that, you know that your peppers are gonna be really, really sweet for your recipe. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is start my rice. I can't eat rice. Not even two or three little grains of rice. I can't eat it. I'm very sick. So I got my little rice pot here. And I used to make a big pot of rice that would last maybe a week or so. But I stopped doing that. I make just enough for that night and that's it. Um, I have one cup of rice. And I have one and a half cups of water. And I only add three things. I used to add four things, but now it's only three. So I add a little salt. Some garlic powder and onion powder. Now you all know from watching my channel, I don't measure anything. I tell people you have got to learn and know the spices that you use. You have to know which ones you can be lib liberal with. You have to learn which ones you can be sparing with or heavy handed with. You have to learn your herbs and spices so that you can spice your food the way you want it. I mean, I can give you an estimate of what I'm doing, but your palate is not the same as my palate, most likely. Okay, 
and maybe I want more garlic in my in my rice if I were able to eat it. So anyway, I've got that in my rice cooker pot. Okay. See? And then I'm just going to take this pot, put it in the rice cooker, hit start and white rice. Okay? All right, so we got the peppers going, we got the sweet potatoes going, we got the rice going, and the next thing I want to do is um, prep my batatas. I just recently started buying batatas. And I prefer the smaller ones, but this was all they had were these big ones. And trust me, these are not even the biggest ones. But I like the batatas. They're, it's another type of a sweet potato. It's really good. You can use it to make hash browns, um, french fries, whatever you like. Um, I'm just going to cut these up into cubes and make them something savory with a little salt and pepper. I need my strainer so I don't pour my potatoes into the sink. But I'll show you how I cut up my batata. I peel, I wash them, I peel them after I wash them, and I let them sit in salt water for about an hour. And I'll show you what they look like. This is how I cut them up, into big, thick chunks like that, okay? So what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna season my batatas up. First thing I'm gonna do is use a little salt. Even though I soaked them in salt, I'm gonna put a little salt on there some pepper. Oops, I thought that was open. A little bit of pepper. Now when I get to the tiki masala, I'm going to turn the camera down so you can see exactly what I'm doing. But I want to move quickly through this because this is not the main part of the video. This is not what the video is about. So that's why I haven't turned the camera down. So when we get to the tiki masala, I'll turn the camera down so you can see what's going on. But here I have put salt and pepper on the batatas. B-A-T-A-T-A. -A -T -A -T -A. Batata. And then I'm going to add some avocado oil. to the batatas, and then I'm going to toss them over the sink to make sure they're all evenly coated with oil, salt, and pepper. I'm going to let these hang out for a little while so they, they can absorb the salt and the pepper. All right? Now, I want to get started on making my sauce, so I guess I should turn you all down. Or, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put these batatas in the oven first. I've got some, a pan, glass pan, parchment paper. And you want to spread these out as best you can, if you can, in your pan, because then they will cook quicker than they would if they were all piled up on top of each other, okay? And here they are in the pan, and I'm going to put these in the oven. The batatas, the peppers, and the sweet potatoes are all going to cook at 450 degrees. And I'm just going to keep an eye on um, the peppers because they will cook a lot sooner. Now, using parchment paper, let's see, I turned the timer off for some reason. 
Using parchment paper in the oven is probably not a good idea if you're cooking at a temperature over 400 because if you've ever seen the movie Fahrenheit 451, paper burns at 450 degree, 451 degrees. So you better watch your oven in case it runs a little hot, but I've had yet to have that paper catch on fire. So, but I'm in here, I'm not going anywhere. All right, so we've got that set on 450. We've got the peppers in there, we've got the batatas in there, and we have the sweet potatoes in there. So the next thing I wanna do is start on my sauce. Where's my sauce making stuff? Here it is. So, my sauce is gonna start out, like I said, it's like a tomato soup, with a thick tomato soup with chicken in it, okay? So here we go. I have four very large Roma tomatoes, and I'm just gonna take one of these little measuring spoons. I've already washed the tomato, and then I just scoop out that top part there. So it looks like that, all right? And I said I would turn you down. Let me turn you down so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Flip that. And then I will put you all right down there like so. Okay, are we good? We're good, okay. And this is how I just take that little part out that I don't want in there. All right, and I'm gonna cut those in half. You can quarter them, but I find it works just as well cutting them in half because I put them open side down. And I think they cook just fine that way. But if you wanna quarter them, cut them up into chunks, you can. This is all gonna go, what was that? Hold on. Okay, so you can quarter them, cut them in chunks, but it's all going in the food processor once it's done. Now, I was really upset today because I like a lot of garlic. And all I could find at the store today were these little cloves, and I don't like these, I'm sorry, these little bulbs. And I like the big bulbs, the giant elephant garlic. And I thought I was out, but then I said, check the refrigerator one more time, and look what I found. Two cloves elephant cloves, okay? And I like these better because they're easier to work with because they are so big. Look at that clove. Look at this clove. See how small that is? And then you gotta chop it real tiny. I like this and I kind of shave it off and add it to my sauce. So I was real happy about finding that elephant garlic hiding in my refrigerator. So I'm just gonna cut the ends off and peel off the shell, that's one. See how easy it is to work with that? Cut the end off, this end off, and take off the outer part. And then I just cut it up really thin. Now you don't have to cut it up thin. It's gonna go into the sauce while there's liquid in the pan. I start my pan off pretty dry. But then as it cooks, I add a little liquid to it. And then I add the garlic because, you know, burnt garlic does not taste good. It's very bitter. So you really don't have to um, make this paper thin. You can cut it any way you want to. Just make sure that you put this in after you've added some liquid to the pan so that this does not burn because burnt garlic, to me, does not taste very good. 
or you can make some roasted garlic in the oven. And if you don't know how to do that, I do have that on my playlist, how to make roasted garlic. All you need is a little oil, um, some garlic cloves, put it in an oven safe bowl, cover it with some foil and let it hang out for about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes at about 400 degrees. And when you take it out, it'll be just like a garlic paste. And the outside might be a little golden brown. And it's so good. So you can do it that way or you can do it the way I'm suggesting here where we're going to add this, but only after we have some liquid in the pot. Okay. Now, I think that's enough garlic, I think. And since I peeled some garlic, I'm going to add a few of what I peeled. I'm not even going to cut these because they're so small. Let me just cut that butt off right there. And that's what's going to go in my pot, right? And then I'm going to cut up some onion, just rough chop it. Because again, all of this is going to go into your food processor because you want a nice, smooth, thick, creamy kind of tomato soup for your sauce, okay? So that's half. Doesn't matter how you cut it, it's all gonna be blended down to a thick, creamy consistency. But you know, I think sometimes cutting and chopping is therapeutic. <laughs> that's why I like to do it. Take out some aggressions, right? So I've got the garlic and the onion in the bowl. And the only thing that's going in the pan first is the onion and tomato. Once I got a little sauce going, um, then I will add a little water and continue to cook it from there. So that's what we have so far. And let me just toss these tomatoes in there. And I want to move you to the stove. Is this cord long enough? I hope it is. I don't want to have to unplug the light just to take it to the stove. I don't want to have to do that. Hold on. I've got to unplug it so I can untangle it and then move it to the stove. There we go. Warm it up a little bit. Okay. So now let's move to the stove. Cool. So take this pan out of the way and I'm going to use my Dutch oven. I need a new one. I'm going to use my Dutch oven to start that. So we're going to add some olive oil, not olive oil. I'm saying olive oil because I use this decanter for my um, avocado oil. It's so pretty. I didn't want to throw it away and I don't like buying olive oil anymore. So I'm gonna add some avocado oil to the pan. And then I put my tomatoes in face down, like so. Now, not only is the tomato and the onion a part of your sauce and your tomato soup or your gravy, um, whatever you want to call it, your herb and spice mix. Now your herb and spice mix can be as simple as salt and pepper, but this recipe also requires paprika, curry, cumin, uh, cardamom, ground cardamom and ground coriander, as well as um, if you can find a good pumpkin spice, you want to add that too. And a good vanilla extract, okay? So, it seems like I'm being really liberal with the seasoning. 
and I should be because we're going to add water to this. We're going to add heavy whipping cream to this. And this is what makes your flavor um, what it should be. Your, your spices, your herbs and things, okay? I just wanted to add a little more oil because I want to make sure that my, herb, my um, spice and herb mix does not burn. So I'm going to start the pan out on high. And what I normally do is I normally put the oil and the seasonings in there so that I can bloom the spices a little bit. Um, but I'm talking and I can't walk and talk and chew gum at the same time. So I forgot to do that. So bear with, bear with. Okay. Anyway, so we've got our herbs and spices in there with some oil. I'm starting it on high. It's going to be fine. As it starts to sizzle, I will turn it down. Okay. Also, to the pan, I want to add my onions. I don't want to put the garlic in yet. Because, like I said, I don't want the garlic to burn. Because, to me, burnt garlic is just bitter. And I think it would ruin the recipe, at least for me. I wouldn't enjoy it. Okay. So I've got the onions in there with the tomatoes. And in just a little while, the... Um, peppers will be ready to go in here too and they will be kind of caramelized and very very sweet so i'm just going to cover this up let that hang out for a few minutes and we will come back to that so we've gotten the sauce or the soup started okay and the base of your sauce or soup is your tomatoes your onions garlic and your seasonings okay um, so let's move over to the pan. Let's come back over here because now we're going to start with the chicken. Okay, so I'm going to turn the pan on and sometimes, just sometimes, it helps if you plug the pan in first. Just sometimes now. That's what I'm told. Anyway, so we've got the pan there. And I just want this to heat up a little bit. And I'm going to add more seasoning. And maybe a little bit more oil. And I'll show you the brand of avocado oil that I use since I didn't. Not that it matters that no one's paying me to tell you what brand of oil I use. But um, this is the oil that I use. And I get it at Costco. Uh, this is a new bottle. And so I just pour a little bit into that decanter over there because I like it. I think it's pretty and I don't want to throw it away. It looks, I think that decanter looks better than this big green bottle. Not that, you know. You know, one day this lady said to me, she said, you kind of bougie, ain't you? I said, well, yeah. <laughs> Not really, though. Not really. Okay, so I've already moved the camera. I'm going to turn down the tomatoes. That cooks really, really quick. And I'm going to add some water. Let me take you back over there so you can see. I'm going to add about maybe a cup and a half to two cups of water because we don't want anything to burn while we're working on other things. And listen, um, if you're not experienced in the kitchen, um, I would say don't have all these different things going on at one time because it is kind of a dance to be um, cooking all these different things at once. You got to be over here. You got to be over there. You got to stir this. You got to turn that. You got to pull that and, you know. So there we go. That's about two cups of water. And we're just going to let that hang out. I've turned it down to about a medium high. Okay. And as I said, we're going to start on the chicken now. I hope I'm not making anybody dizzy. <laughs> 
Okay, so the pan is heating up. I can feel the heat. Then I'm going to add just a little bit more oil to the pan. And I really like this avocado oil. I've purchased a number of different brands and I don't know, there was a taste or something wasn't right or whatever, but this one seems to be the one that works best for me. So I'm going to turn this pan up a little bit. And then work that oil around. Okay. And that pan is hot enough. Now I'm using chicken thighs. Again, I used to use chicken tenders, but I don't like those as much anymore. I'm using um, chicken thighs that have been cleaned and deboned. And I left a little bit of skin on the chicken thighs. Now these were already cleaned and deboned at the store. Um, but I cleaned some of the extra fat off because I didn't want too much fat on there. But you know, we've been told for such a long time that fats are bad for us. And I don't know, I've lost the most weight eating the most fat, you know? So go figure. And I've kept the weight off. I'm doing really well. Oh, you know what? Praise report, praise report. I'm no longer taking blood pressure medications and my blood pressure has been good ever since I got off of the blood pressure medication. That's a whole story in and of itself. Well, I'll have to share that at another time, but um, I no longer need blood pressure medicine. My blood pressure is good. It's right where it's supposed to be. It's not as low as I, you know, I'm used to having it like 116 over 60 or 112 over 70, somewhere around there. It's like 122 over 85, something like that, but it's still normal, but not where I'm accustomed to seeing it. But praise report, thank you, Yahweh. I'm no longer taking that stuff anymore, so I'm glad about that. And, 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 another praise report. Um, I don't have those cramps that have me screaming and crying and Hollering for the Lord, okay? I haven't had one of those in over, it's almost two months now. And I'm so grateful for that because those things would catch me and I mean, I'd be in here crying and screaming and yelling and everybody's trying to help me and oh, it was bad. It was really bad. So I'm going to cover this up and let this cook until the chicken turns white. Once it turns white, I'll turn it over on the other side. I'm going to turn the chicken down. Okay. Because I want that to cook nice and slow and cook thoroughly. Okay. Let me check on the sauce again. Okay, that's bubbling nicely. I'm going to turn it up a little bit more. All right. So, I'm just going to clean up a little bit of my mess here from the garlic. And the next thing I want to do is start on the other vegetables for dinner. Um, I'm doing broccoli. Sorry, I got to spin y'all around. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm doing broccoli, cabbage, and broccoli, cabbage, and collard greens. I'm going to do a stir fry with the cabbage and collard greens. And I'm going to also stir, um, yeah, I guess you would say, call it stir fry. Stir fry the, um, the broccoli, okay? So, I almost knocked that bowl over. Let me move that out the way. So, I washed my greens. I love the stalk. The stalk is good. So, I only cut off about that much, okay? I'm going to roll it up, roll it up, roll it up, roll it up. And these are nice and clean. I washed them myself. They were clean when I brought them from the store, but you know I was going to come home and wash them again. But I'm going to give these a chiffonade cut or a very thin cut. Sometimes I julienne, sometimes I chiffonade. Tonight I'm in the night for chiffonade. Cut collard greens and cabbage. 
I guess that's a julienne. That's not really a chiffonade. Can you all see? Okay, cool. Now when my daughter makes them, she just takes hers and she tears them apart with her hands. She doesn't like the, she doesn't really like her collard greens like this, I don't think. I don't know. She likes to tear hers. But when I make them like this, she still eats them. But I think she prefers them the other way. And then I cut the stalks and then maybe we'll give it a cut down the middle like that. And there we have it. Okay, so we we'll take these and put them in the bowl until I'm ready to cook those. There's the collard greens. And then I'm gonna mix in some cabbage with the collard greens. I might need help cutting this. No, I think I'm good. Am I good? No, I'm not. <laughs> I don't know if the knife is just not big enough or it's not sharp enough. There we go. And again, I'm going to chiffonade or julienne. I've already washed this. Probably should have cut this in half because it's so big. It's making it a little difficult to cut. So I'm do that. And I'm only going to use half of this head of cabbage because it's pretty big. I think it might be that I need a new knife or I need to sharpen it. I bought myself an electric sharpener, but I, hmm, I don't always use it. I, instead, I'll go out and buy another knife. <laughs> and the purpose of buying the sharpener was so that I could sharpen the knife and not have to spend so much money buying a new knife every month. Because that's, that's about where I was. I was buying a new knife every month. Okay, so I'm going to save this other half because I think I have all that I need. Let me just give it a cut down the middle. Got all that I need for cabbage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So B is good on that. You throw these little scraps away and these little butts can get thrown in the trash. Got a little trash bag behind me so I don't have to keep running away to throw stuff away. I used to do what, um, what was that lady's name? Rachel something. She used to keep a garbage bowl on the counter so she'd throw all of her garbage in the garbage bowl and then when she got done, she'd empty the garbage bowl, which is a good idea. I like that idea. And then you're not wasting a bunch of plastic and paper and stuff like that. All right. So I said we were also making broccoli. And I'll show you how I prepare the broccoli to be cooked. Checking on my onions and tomatoes. They look good. Chicken is turning white. That's good. Let me give another rinse to my broccoli. And I got some really nice looking broccoli crowns today. 
I got them from a store I don't want to go to, but I went there to get the um, jewel potatoes because you can't always find those jewel potatoes everywhere. I can only find them at um, Whole Foods and there's another market called Sprouts, which is S-P-R-O-U-T-S, which is a lot closer to where I live. So I was glad I found that store. So I'll show you how I prepare my broccoli. I'm gonna use the same knife that I cut the veggies with. I cut about an inch off the stalk. Okay. What was that? Sounds like, oh, oh, okay, that's me. <laughs> I could hear myself on the television. All right, I cut off about an inch off the top because I like the stalk. I like the stalks of everything just about, okay? Now these leaves, I don't normally take them off, but if they're wilted and they look kind of rotten, I'll take them off. Otherwise, I leave the leaves like this on there. That's kind of wilted, but it's okay. And that's called rabe, and you can actually cook rabe just like you cook collard greens. So then, there's the broccoli, right? I'm gonna cut it this way instead of cutting the crowns off and then you have all this left over i want the whole thing i want this i want that and i want this okay so i cut until i get to this part here and then i just pull it off like so okay because if you cut all the way down, all these little pieces here, these little tendrils are going to break off and you're going to have a bunch of those little pieces all over the counter and it won't be on your plate. We're trying to get more food on the plate by cutting it this way. And I stop right there, right? And then I just pull it off, right? And this part is so good. See, now you'll lose a, a little bit of the broccoli tops, but not as much as you would if you were to cut it all the way down. Don't go all the way down. Just pull that off, pull it off, pull it off. And then you'll get one that's like that, right? And that's mine. I like mine big like that. So, or I can cut it down a little bit more so it's a little thinner but i like mine to cook just like that okay and that's how i prepare my broccoli that's how i cut it some of that's brown i took that off just want to make sure you can see pull it off it just comes right off cut it down to where the stalk ends and then just uh-oh, I cut it a little more. Pull it off. See? There we go. And this one's kind of thick, so I'm going to cut this one in half and there you have it and this is so good like this it's really really good okay um let's see i've cut two so far should i cut a third one i'm gonna save this one because my pan is only so big and i would have to cook half of it at one point and then cook another half and i don't want to have to do any more cooking than I have for tonight. All right, so what I need is another bowl because what I do is I take the broccoli and I season it, salt, pepper, garlic, onion, avocado oil. I toss it and I let it sit for 30 minutes so that it can absorb whatever I have seasoned it with or flavored it with, okay? So whether you're using salt and pepper or you're using sumac and uh, 
honey, whatever you decide you want to use to season this with, um, you need to let it sit for at least 30 minutes. That's just my rice cooker. That means my rice is done. So I'm just going to take the broccoli and put it in the pan here. I probably could get that other head in here, but it's okay. It's all right. It'll cook even faster because I'm not completely filling the pan. Okay. Scoop up my mess. And rinse my hands. Right, and then we're going to add a little bit, a little bit of avocado oil. Oh, you know what I should do? Ooh, ooh, ooh. My son got us a, and I say us because this was a family gift. My son got us the Ninja Air Fryer. And instead of frying things in like a big pot of oil or whatever, you just spray your items with this if you want any oil at all. You don't have to use any oil. But I found this one. This is avocado oil, and this is the same brand that I like, Chosen. But this one is an Italian herb. It smells good. I think it's better to use this on my broccoli instead of using, um, just pouring it out of the bottle like that. Okay, where's my other salad tosser? All right, I don't have time to look for it. It should have been out, it should have been ready. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna put some gloves on and toss it in my hand because I don't know where the other one is. Should be in the drawer with this one. That's why I have a place for everything. So when I go to look for it, or when anybody goes to look for it, it's in a space that makes sense, and you don't have to look for it because it's right where it's supposed to be. But anyway. All right, so I put the oil on, season it with some salt. Pepper. garlic and onion and then I need to turn that chicken over because it has turned white garlic oopsie and some onion I took my glove off because I didn't want to have food and stuff on the glove and then be touching my, you know, touching things in the kitchen. We have to talk about glove use and the best way to do that. All right, so anyway, I normally toss them with my little salad fork, but couldn't find the other one. So I'm just tossing it like this, moving them around. Getting friendly and familiar with each other. You all make nice now. Make nice. Make nice in the pan. And this is the way I fix my broccoli. And I only steam it for about, I don't know, seven minutes. And then I'll turn it, turn, turn the pan off and take, put the pan on a burner that's not hot and let it cook a little while longer with the top on, but no heat from the oven, from the stove, I mean. All right, so that's that. And I'm going to cover that. I think I'm gonna, oh, I was gonna say, where's the top? All right, that's gonna get covered. And I'm just gonna let this hang out for about 30 minutes. So it can 
absorb what I seasoned it with. Whatever you decide to, sort, to season it with. You don't have to use what I use, but this is what I like. All right? Now, I need to season the collard greens and the cabbage. However, I need another big, deep bowl. Do I have one? I don't know. Well, we'll just toss it with my hands again. So, a little bit of avocado oil. And again, I should use a sprayer because I get more to come out with the bottle than what I really want. Because we're going to stir fry this, right? This is not going to be um, boiled in water. Garlic and onion. And you know, even though I use the same things pretty much over and over, every everything that I'm cooking has a different flavor, you know, because what I'm cooking has a different flavor. All right, so we did garlic and onion. We're gonna add some salt. And some pepper. I've been seasoning food for a long time, so I kind of know what I like, what's too much and what's not enough. Now, sometimes I don't do enough, but it's better not to do enough and then add more than to do too much. And you can't take it away. So let me get another pair of gloves here and we will toss the collard greens and cabbage. And we will let these hang out for about 20 to 30 minutes. Because you know the salt also helps to cook your vegetables. So then you don't have to have as much heat if you don't want much heat. I like a crunch to my veggies. I don't like them soupy. I really don't like them floating in water or the pot liquor, although the pot liquor is good. Um, I prefer not to have it that way though. Okay, so that's ready to be cooked. Okay, and then let me just scoop up my mess. So these in the trash bag. And we will tend to this chicken and check on those peppers. Let me run over here and check my sauce too. Like I said, you know, it's kind of like a dance in the kitchen. You gotta be over here, you gotta be over there. You gotta turn this, you gotta open that, you gotta close that, you gotta twist that, you know a lot to keep up with when you're cooking a lot of different things. Okay. Tomatoes and onions look good. Let me show you how they look because right now at this point I am going to go ahead and add in the garlic because we got a nice tomatoey, oniony soup base going. What, where are my onions? Oh, here we go. Here's the garlic and a few little pieces of onion. That's going in there. All that's going in there. And the garlic is just gonna melt down into a nice paste. And I had a spoon. There we go. Just give it a stir, move things around. Get a nice little simmer going. And look, tomatoes are done. Now, if you want to, you can take out the, the skin. But, you know, if it's available to take out, take it out if you want, if it doesn't bother you. Or if it bothers you, take it out, I mean. There's the skin right there. Okay? Otherwise, you can just leave it in there because, again, this is going in the food processor. And you won't notice any skins because it's going to be creamed down to a nice thick creamy soup. I'm going to leave that one on because there's tomato attached to it. Okay. 
don't want to throw anything away unless I have to. And I don't have to throw away the skin. So that looks good. So let me check, let me check the peppers and see if they're done yet. Because they need to cool off. Oh yeah, the peppers are done. Let me move the cabbage over here and the collard greens over here. And we're going to take the peppers out the oven and let them hang out and cool off a little bit. Sorry to move you around, but this is live. I don't want to edit. Don't want to do it. I would rather go outside and play. So, this is live. And because it's live, you're going to get all... <laughs> you're going to get all the live you can get. All right? So, if you saw the beginning of the first broadcast, you know... If you didn't see it, you don't know. Don't worry about it. Huh? I ain't shame. I ain't shame. I ain't shame. I am not shame. Okay, so I said I was going to take the peppers out. Let's take the peppers out. Now, I'm using a Pyrex dish. I'm going to put down a towel. Because about a month ago, ooh, the batatas look good. They look good. About a month ago, I had a Pyrex dish and I set it down on the naked counter like that. And as soon as I set it down, I stepped away from the pan and it burst into a million and one pieces. And I've been sitting those um, Pyrex dishes on the counter right out the oven for years. And that was the first time that ever happened. So I said, well, I won't do that again. I mean, because if I had still been standing there, I could have been cut. I mean, it just went, and it just went in every direction. And I could have been hit and hurt, but I wasn't, thanks be to Yahweh. I walked away just in time. Okay. So I need to sit this. I'm going to put this over here on the oven. I don't think it'll burst or I mean on top of the stove. I don't think it'll burst on the stove. I hope not anyway. I've walked away from it real quick. All right, so this is what I was telling you. Your peppers are going to look singed, charred, burnt, whatever you want to call it, all right? And you want to let them cool down. You can just pull the stem off. There's going to be a lot of juice on the inside. That'll help it to cool by pulling off the stem. That'll let some of the heat out some of the steam out or you can just cut into it it's going to be a lot of water on the inside i'm just cutting into it like that just to help it cool down quicker because i want to hurry up and do what i need to do to these peppers but roasting them this way makes them even sweeter because what we're going to do we're going to let them cool down and then we're just going to pull off the skin like that but it's really hot there's a lot of steam there and because we've let these cook for a little while there's some sugar there and you know sugar gets very very hot when you heat up sugar it gets hotter than water does when you boil water so it's important for your safety and comfort that you let those cool off a bit before you start to work with them all right so now i think i'm gonna have to add just a teensy, no, I'm just going to turn the pan off. I might have to add a little water. Yeah, I'm going to have to add water to the chicken because most of the juice has kind of cooked out. Can you see? All right. I need to get another pan. I love this pan. I love the size of it. I love how it cooks. It's not really the best thing to be cooking with, but I just, I can't leave it alone. I just can't leave it alone. Any hoosters, there's the chicken, and it's cooked on one side. I'm pretty sure that it's done in the middle, but I'm still gonna turn it over and let it cook anyhow.
So we're going to turn these over. And you can tell whether they are done by cutting into them. They'll be very easy to cut into. They'll be very tender. And sometimes I cut the chicken before I cook it. And sometimes I wait until it's done. And then I cut it. Because that's one way for me to tell, you know, that it's done by cutting into it. If it's real tender, I know it's done. So let's see. No, it's not, not as tender as it could be. So like I said, it's only cooked on one side as far as I'm concerned. Some might say, oh, you cooked it for a long time and you don't have to cook both sides, but I, I do. Rinse the dough cutter off. Okay. And we're going to turn the pan back on and let this cook for about another 10 minutes. I'm going to add a little bit of water to this because I don't want it to stick to the pan. And I'm telling you, this is such a good meal. I mean, I'm telling you, I'm getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning to come downstairs to get more tiki masala. It was just that good, okay? So I'm going to turn this back on. I added some water to the pan. Give it a little shake to make sure that there's some water under the chicken so it's not sticking to the pan while it's cooking, okay? Now, I'm not as good at this as Chef Bruno Alvuz. I don't know if you all follow his channel, but Chef Bruno Alvuz is a Frenchman, and he's a chef, and he's very good at what he does. And I mean, his, his recipe and his foods are for the advanced, advanced um, chef or advanced homemaker, dinner maker, whatever you want to call yourself, um, his, his, his things are quite advanced. Now, what he does, and I'm going to try it. I've never done it before. So we're about to find out if I'm any good or not. But he takes a fork and a pair of tongs. I use these tongs on the chicken, so I'm going to get another pair of tongs. Case that chicken was not done and he holds the pepper this way and then scrapes the skin off like that so then he doesn't get burnt it ain't working for me <laughs> i gotta get my fingers in there now if you want to you can leave the skin on you don't have to take skin off because again this is going to be all put into the food processor and cream down and this skin that's been charred a little bit, singed a little bit, is just gonna add more flavor to your recipe. So, um, and they're gonna be really, really sweet. They're very sticky. It's like there's sugar on here. They're very sticky to the touch. So like I said, wait until it cools down a little bit so you don't burn yourself. And I don't worry about the seeds because these are sweet bell peppers and the seeds don't add any heat to the recipe. And I am a wimp when it comes to spicy foods. I don't, I, I, I don't eat them. I don't eat spicy foods. I don't eat spicy foods because when my mouth starts to burn, I'm mad. <laughs> I get mad. And I don't want to be mad. I'm like, how do you enjoy your food when your mouth is burning like that? I, 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 I can't. I can't. Now, my son, he puts hot sauce on everything. And you know when he's putting hot sauce. Listen, listen, listen. I know when my son is putting hot sauce on his food when I'm upstairs in my bedroom. He will shake the bottle. I'm telling you, this house is very com compartmentalized. 
So it's not like it's an open floor plan where things can just walk all over the house. But, you know, certain aromas do travel. But he starts putting hot sauce on his food, and I'm upstairs in the bed, and I can smell it. And I'm like, would you please give it a break? He puts hot sauce on everything. Mac and cheese, potatoes, everything. He puts hot sauce on everything. I can't enjoy my food that way. I just can't. You know what? I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I have not looked at the comments, but you understand. You understand, right? I, I'm, I'm trying to show you this recipe. I'm trying to cook. And you know me, once I start yapping, okay, I can forget about what I'm doing. So please forgive me for not interacting. I'm sorry. But this is my zone. I love to cook. I love to cook. I love to see people enjoy their food. I need to check on the potatoes because they were looking kind of like they might be ready and stuff, you know? So I peeled some of the skin off. I'm not pressed about peeling all of it off. Ooh, the potatoes look good. They look good. I think they're done. I'm going to take one out and taste it. But there they are. Okay. I am going, what am I going to do with this? I got to put it down. Let's see. Uh... I have still another hour on the sweet potatoes, so I have to take these out. I can't leave them in this oven, and then the other dinner is in the top oven, and I don't want that to go cold because somebody might want to come in here and get their food. Uh, let's see. Can I put it? I can, I'm going to put it on the stove, and hopefully it won't burn. I don't know why that other can burst like that, but I'm putting it on the stove. I'm walking away real quick. Because if it bursts, I don't want it to do so while I'm standing there. But the sweet potatoes have another hour to cook. So I had to take the potatoes out because I think they are done. I'm going to try one and see. All right, so there are the peppers. Now I'll scrape out a little bit for the big hunk of seeds there, I'll take that out. But I'm not too pressed or worried about, you know, a few little straggler, stragglers here and there when it comes to the seeds. And that's the skin. And the more you try the skin, the sweeter your pepper is going to be, the sweeter your recipe is going to be. The stickier your pepper is going to be, it's going to be nice and sweet. So the more you char the outside, and then also it's easier to remove the skin when it's charred even more. But you got to be careful because there's a fine line between charring just the skin and then ending up burning up your pepper. So I guess that was about what? 30 minutes we had these in the oven at 450 degrees. Okay. I'm peeling off what I can take off easy. If it's not cooperating, if it's not coming off too easy, I'm not going to worry about it. Again, it's going in the food processor. And see all the seeds there? I'll just pull that part off. Or just scrape the seeds off. So if you can get the skin off, good. If you can't, don't worry about it. Now if you've really burnt the skin up and it's really, really burnt and you don't like the taste of char, then I would say spend a little more time and remove the skin. Other than that, that's all I'm doing. Okay. So what we're going to do now 
is put the peppers in with the tomatoes, the onions, and the garlic. I really need to hurry up and get over there and check that to make sure that that's not burning. So let's step on over here. I know that's hot. I just know it is. Okay, so that has reduced really nicely. I'm going to turn it down and add in my peppers. Y'all, this is gonna be so good. I cannot wait, I can't wait, I can't wait. So this has reduced down nicely. A little bit of the tomato has stuck to the bottom of the pan, but that's okay because we can add a little bit of water and just scrape it like that and it's gonna come right up and that's gonna add more flavor to the recipe. This is how you make a roux. See how that just came right up? Look at that. And all that is, is the herb and spice mix that has stuck to the bottom of the pan. Look how thick that is already. Look at how thick it is already. And we haven't even blended it up yet. All right. So that's what it looks like. And it's going to be a nice, smooth, creamy, 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 creamy sauce. Now, the one thing that I tell people all the time is taste as you go. Because the one thing you don't want to do is take something to the table and it's either seasoned not enough or you've over seasoned it. So while you're cooking, Keep checking. I'm going to check this now and see how it is. Mmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's good, but we're not done with the seasoning yet. Everything that I'm going to add to this is already in my urban spice mix that I started out with. This jar here. But depending on what you're cooking, you're going to want to have your certain herbs and spices more pronounced than others. Okay? So what we're going to add now is some nutmeg. Onion powder. Ground cardamom. Oh, let me turn this chicken down. I hear it boiling. I don't want anything to burn. I want everything to be just so. Sorry about that. I thought this was open. This is a new bottle. And this is ground cardamom. And cardamom, coriander, and curry, as well as, as cumin, are some of the main ingredients for this recipe. All right, here's the coriander. Did I open that? No, I didn't. Coriander. And then cumin. Now, cumin is, that's listen, cumin is that real funky, 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 funky. So. This is one of those spices you want to go easy on. Now, I don't have that much in here. Just a little corn. But that cumin, that funky, funky cumin, mm -hmm. that's one of those you want to be careful with. I'm going to add some curry. Now, there's already curry in my seasoning mix. I'm going to add some paprika. There's paprika in my seasoned mix as well. So we're just going to take it up a bit. I'm going to add some pepper. This is black coarse pepper. I love coarse pepper. I don't care for the finely ground pepper. Now, secret ingredients, okay? 
pumpkin spice. Now you can make your own pumpkin spice. All you have to do is check. I don't have my glasses, so I can't tell you. Look at the ingredients for pumpkin spice and you can mix and make your own, okay? But we're gonna add some pumpkin spice to this. Okay? The final secret ingredient, and I thought I didn't have any more vanilla, is vanilla. This takes the place of sugar. And I do three capfuls. One, I don't know if I had that much. Two, and three. Now let me tell you something you can try. I was a little afraid to try it because I've never used it before this way. But I use extracts to replace sugar. I have replaced sugar with flavor by using extracts. Does that make sense? I don't think sugar is a flavor. I don't think sugar has a flavor. It's just sweet. So I started buying these um, emulsions and Extracts by Laura Ann, L-O-R-A-N-N. And let me tell you, they are absolutely some of the best emulsions and extracts that you are going to find anywhere. They can be a little pricey, but they're worth it. But they also sell them in the little mini dram. So if you don't want to get this size and spend a bunch of money, you can buy the dram, which is about that big, okay? But they have one, and it is, I just put in vanilla extract, right? This is buttered chicken, right? This one is a butter vanilla, and it smells so good. And this stuff is so pungent, so concentrated. All you need is a few drops. You are going to overdo it if you use any more than that. So because I didn't have a full three capfuls of the vanilla extract, I'm going to do just a little bit. And you're not, you, this stuff is clear, so you won't even see it anyway, most likely. But... This vanilla butter flavor smells so delicious. I'm just gonna put a dot. One dot, two dots, that's it. This butter vanilla smells absolutely delicious. And there's no sugar. Well, let me tell you this way. I think the sugar that they use is sucralose. And sucralose is not supposed to change your numbers when it comes to your sugar levels in your bloodstream, right? And I'm just giving this a stir. Look how thick it is. Look how thick it is. Do you see how thick that is? It's not supposed to change your sugar levels like high fructose corn syrup or regular table sugar wood or like some of these other artificial sugars will do. So that's why I bought it. But here's the other thing. The sugar content, the sucralose content is so low, they don't even have to report how much is in here because there's not that much sucralose in here. Okay, so if you have an issue with sugar and you're not able to digest it, you're not able to process it, you're getting sick when you eat it, start using the extracts, okay? Mmm, mmm, wow. That smells so good. It smells, so you see how thick it's getting? It's getting, it's reducing. So all the water is cooking out, right? So I'm gonna add just a little bit, a little more water than that. I'm gonna add a little water and then we're gonna start incorporating a little bit of the cream. And then we're gonna mix it all together. The rice is done. The only thing that I'm waiting for is the sweet potatoes, and I have to cook the cabbage and the broccoli, which they'll only take about seven to ten minutes to eat. So, you know, dinner's almost done. So there's some water to let this simmer and come together even more. And this is your tomato base, pepper base soup. Okay. Now I need to try these batatas. I think I can find one that's cooled off. Yeah, they're soft. They are soft. See? Ooh, and they are sweet. So they're sweet and savory. Mmm. Let me have that back. Mmm. <laughs> 
it tastes, ooh, they're really sweet. They're very sweet, and it tastes like someone added some butter to these. Now, you could mash these up with some butter, make them like home fries. They got a little crisp on the outside, and they're very sweet. Mmm, mm-mm. Mmm, mm-mm. Mmm. That is so good. So let's come back over here to the chicken. Let me move this out the way. Before I have a huge mess. Mm -mm. Don't spill, don't spill. All right, so the chicken, she is a done. And all the juice that's left in this pan is gonna also go into our gravy or our chicken soup over there. Okay. Oh, y'all can't see, can you? Sorry about that, sorry. Now I have some other chicken recipes that I'll be sharing with you. I don't want to tell you what they are just yet, but they're, you know, they're very easy. Probably a little bit easier than this because everything gets done in one pan. But with this, you know, there's a few different things going on. Okay, so this is done. See how easy that cut? So I just take my dough cutter and just cut straight down. And it's nice and tender. It looks good, it smells good. Now you can cut this any way you want. I like my chunks nice and big, not too small. It's a tender and it's juicy. Just get this little piece right here. Mm. Mm hmm. It needs some salt. But I flavored the tomato base over there, so we're gonna work from there. I'm gonna pour this into um, the pot where the tomato base is. Stir it together and we'll taste it. But before we stir it together, I have to cream down the, um, the tomato base first. So let me move this over here Cover the chicken back up. And then I need to plug up the food processor. Can I have some more room, please? Can we see? Can we see? Oh, say can you see? All right, so I know this pot is very, very hot. I know it is. Hmm. I don't want to get, okay, I'm going to put the cup into the sink. So if it spills, it spills into the sink and not on the counter. How about that? Okay, so let me take this cup off. And 
moving one here. Get another pot holder and pour this into the cup in the sink. That way, nothing stays on the counter and I don't get burned. this nice and creamy. Now if you want to leave it chunky, do you baby? Do you. But the ideal tiki masala has a nice creamy tomato base and there's usually no telltale signs of you know tomato onion garlic or anything like that but it's up to you if you want a chunky sauce go and eat your chunky sauce because you gotta eat it right so you might as well make it in a way that you're going to enjoy it otherwise what are you doing what are you doing okay We will put this back like so. Can y'all see? Or do I, I think I need to put it down a little bit? Why is it not going down? Maybe I'm using the wrong one. That's not it. What if it's this one? It is that one. Look at that. Okay. Turn it up this way. Like that. And then put that on. Close that and lock that. Are we ready? I think we are. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay, so this is what we have. Look at this. See that? Let me open it. Nice and creamy. A nice creamy thick tomato base or tomato soup, if you will. Okay, so we're gonna go back over here to the stove. I probably should rinse that pot out, but in real life, I wouldn't. So I'm not going to fake the funk now. No. I'm not going to do it. There we go. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that beautiful? Now, if you wanted to make it even sweeter, I bet you you could take some of those batata t um, potatoes over there. And we could have put some of that into the soup mix and thickened up the soup some and made it even sweeter. Oh, honey, there's ways. There's ways to get that sugar in. There's ways to make your desserts sweet without the use of artificial sweeteners, um, any of that stuff. There's ways to do it. If I want to make this sweeter, all I got to do is take some of that. Matter of fact, I'll show you. I'll show you. I will show you that I'm doing what I say I do. And I started doing this years ago where I would take sweet potatoes or any type of sweet, any type of potato that was sweet 
and I would add it to the blender, put some water or some milk in there, blend it up, and it would thicken my soup or my stew, whatever I was making, and it would make it sweet. So I'm gonna show you, because I can show you better than I can tell you. <laughs> all right, so we're just putting the chicken in there. It's all nice and tender and seasoned well and smelling all good. And all the sauce that was in this pan from the chicken, that's going in there too. Don't leave that out. Don't do that. All right, so the chicken is in. It's in there. And we're just gonna stir it together. Right? Look at that. Can you, oh, you can't even see. Oh, I'm so sorry. There we go. Stir that chicken in. And the rice is ready, the potatoes are ready over here, the rice is cooked over there, and the only thing left to do is do the broccoli and the, the collard greens and the cabbage, and dinner's done. Dinner's done. I mean, how long have I been on the air? What does that say, 93, so that would be an hour and a half, or two hours just about I've been here? Listen, you can do this. You can do this. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Look at that tomato soup. It's like a tomato soup, a sweet tomato soup. Now, as far as these potatoes, let me, let me tell you what I was talking about. Where's the picture? All right, so look, we got some sauce left in here, right? I'm not washing it out, no I'm not. But watch what I do. I'm gonna take some of these batatas, which are very sweet, okay? I'm putting them in the blender with a little bit of what's left of the sauce, right? We're gonna, let me wash my hands because I don't wanna touch, I, you know, I can't do that. I can't touch my food and have my hands on my food and then be touching my cabinets and touching my this and that. No, we gotta wash our hands before we touch the, the pepper bottle, the salt bottle, the cabinet, the refrigerator. No, we got, you, you got to wash your hands. You got to wash your hands now. You can't just be touching the tripod and got food and stuff all over your hands. You can't do that. I can't do that. All right. So look at here. There we go. See the batatas in there with a the little bit of sauce that was left over? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get some heavy whipping cream. Yeah, I am. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't play. I do not play in the kitchen. If you want to play... This ain't the place for you. If you want to play, you got to get out of my kitchen. I don't play. All right. See that? See the batatas down there? See that little bit of sauce that's in there? Heavy moo whipping cream, okay? That's going in here, just like that. Bam! All right, and then we want to add some of this whipping cream to the pot over there and a little bit of butter, because after all, it's called butter chicken, right? You can't call it butter chicken and not put, put butter in there. I'd be lying. I would be lying calling it butter chicken and there's no butter. All right, so let's get the top and put that right here. Lock that like so. Put that on there. The potatoes are in there. A little bit of the sauce that was left in there is in there. Okay? We're just going to zhuzh it up. We're going to do it again. See that? It's going to be quick. Turn it on. Start it. Turn it on. Start. That's all it takes. Now, I'm gonna add a little water 
to the recipe because I'm because I put the batata in here. It's going to get real thick the more it cooks and you don't want it to be like cheese. So we're going to add a little water to the pot and a little cream. OK. So swing on back over here. And put this in the pot. Now that's that's sugar right there. There's your sugar. You're getting sugar from the batata. Okay? I need something to scrape this out with because we're not gonna waste this. This is just too good. To not have it go into the recipe. I'm telling you, we, we can't do that. This is the good stuff here. cream and the batata. Let's incorporate that. Mix it well, mix it well, mix it well. Get the mess up. And I'm going to add a little water to it because as it simmers a little bit more. Now, this is what you want to look for. When it simmers a little bit more, you're going to see it looks like somebody poured some red oil into your pot. It's going to look like red oil once it has simmered a while. And that's what you want to see. That's when you know it's done. Everything is incorporated. It's, it's good. When you see that red oil come to the surface, we didn't put any red oil in there, but we did use some avocado oil, but the avocado oil is not red. It's going to look like red oil in there. You want to see that, and that's going to let you know it's done. Now, I'm going to add a little cream. Oops, that one's not open. Let me get the other one that I opened. Add a little more cream. Do I have any more water? A little more water since we put the batata in there. And we're going to give it a stir and let it simmer for a while okay because we got to see where we are we can't put this on the table not until we know for sure that this is well seasoned everything is combined it's cooked well you cannot put this on the table until you've tried it all right doesn't that look good doesn't that look absolutely delicioso Está bien. Está bien. Where's my spatula? Oh. Just want to clean up the sides a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There we go. Now we're going to cover this and let this simmer for a few minutes. We're going to look for that little bit of red oil at the top. And then we will know she's done. She's finito. Finished. Okay. So, what do we have left? What do we need to do? I'm going to take these potatoes, potatoes, and put these in the top oven so they'll stay warm. Oh, this top oven is so hot. Wow. All right, there's still 30 minutes left on the sweet potatoes. Now, by the time I get this, these vegetables ready, um, those sweet potatoes will be ready. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, so you can see, I'm going to move this back to the back burner. But put it on. Okay. I can't 
can't see which burner is which. I should know this by now. I've had this stove for at least two years, right? So I should know. And this one. That's the one. Okay, so I've turned on the broccoli and it's on high. Once I hear it sizzle, I'll turn it down. I just like to get it going. And then, um, oh, it's the, it got going quick. I hear it sizzling already. Okay, so let's give the pan a shake and a toss. Move stuff around. Because see, when you put the salt in here, I don't know if you can see it, but it develops a liquid. The salt helps to sweat. See that little bit of juice there? The salt helps your veggies to sweat. So there's a little bit, not, not a whole lot. There might be a teaspoon of liquid in there from sweating the, um, the broccoli with salt. Okay? I'm just picking some stuff up on the floor. Give it a shake. Now you're gonna to have to put some water in here to create kind of a steam pot effect because you can't cook this all the way with not enough water. So we're gonna put in about maybe a half a cup, quarter cup of water. Just to create a steam pot. We don't want to boil the broccoli. So that's when the broccoli gets mushy. And I don't like mushy broccoli. I want it to have a little bit of a crunch. And I want it to also um, have its, its, its shape. If you cook it too much, it's going to be limp and floppy and it'll fall apart on you. So I'm going to add a little water. That was like maybe a half a cup of water and shake it around a little bit. And that little bit of water, see, you see can you see the steam in there? That little bit of water will create a steam pot effect. You don't even really want to be able to see the water. Just enough to get a steam going in there. Okay. Um, like I said, I wrecked the kitchen. It's wrecked. It's wrecked. It's, it's really wrecked. All right, so we've got the chicken going. The broccoli going, the sweet potatoes have another 26 minutes. Now, let me show you something about sweet potatoes. I shouldn't show you this now. We should talk about this. We're going to talk about this tomorrow or in another video because I might not be here tomorrow, right? I might not want to do a video tomorrow. Yahweh might say it's time to come home, you know? I don't know. So I don't want to tell you I'm going to do something and I get busy or something else goes on, right? I like to make sure that if I'm going to do something, I like to see it through to fruition. I don't want to tell you I'm going to do something and then not do it. Because that's my reputation. That broccoli is going to steam up nice. I'm going to turn it down to a medium high. I had it on high. Now it's on medium high. Okay, now I want to use the same pan to cook the cabbage and collard greens. And again, that's only going to take like 10 minutes to do. Cook your collards and cabbages, you know, the way you want to. You don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. You have to eat it. You have to like it. You have to enjoy it, you know. So if you want to cook it for a couple hours, don't do the thing. I'm not eating it. <laughs> I'm not either. But this is the way I like it, and I think my family likes it this way too, so that's what we're gonna roll with. That's how we roll. This is how we get down over here. I'm trying to clean up a little bit. But anyway, let me attend to something else, which is what? What can I do? Oh, let me turn off the rice. It's already off, but there's a little warmer in there that keeps it warm. And I don't need the warmer one, so I just turned that off. Okay. 
And I just give that a little shake and a toss. Move it round and around. Let me get my vegetable tongs, not the chicken tongs, but the vegetable tongs. And move this around a little bit more. Take what's off the bottom and put it on the top. Well, I got a little too much water. See that water boiling down? You don't even want to see that much water. That's too much water in this pan. Now I can leave the top off and um, turn it up on high and that water will dissipate a little bit. But it's better to leave it covered because when you take your top, when you keep taking your tops off your pans and your pots when they're cooking, you're letting energy you're letting the heat out and it's going to take even longer to cook because then it's got to build up more heat to cook right so keep your pot your your pots and pans covered when they're cooking and then your food will be done a lot quicker okay now other than that i don't have anything else to cook i'm waiting for the broccoli to get done in here and look i want to show you this also see how it's turned that bright green color when it turns that bright green color, you know what you can do? Put the top back on it. Turn the burner off. Take it off the burner and sit it on a burner that is cold and not hot. By leaving the top on, it'll cook just a little bit more. But if you leave it on the burner, even though the burner is off, it's still going to continue to cook. And then it's probably going to be mushy and soft and fall apart. So I always say once it hits that bright green color, all right, once it gets there, take it off the burner and put it on a cool, the cool part of the stove or on the counter, on a trivet. I got a trivet I could put it on, but I still need to use this pot. Um, I need to find some place to put this so I can cover it with some foil and it can continue to cook in a bowl with the foil covering the next thing I want to do is do the cabbage and the, um, the cabbage and the collard greens. I'm getting tired. <laughs> I've been up since 6.30. No, I got up at 6 this morning. I'm tired. So I got a bowl here for the broccoli. And let me get some foil so I can immediately cover it. And it'll cook a little bit more being covered in the bowl. Okay. Ooh, that look good. That looks real fine. Now, if I were just cooking cabbage, I would add some raisins um, to my cabbage because I like it like that. And I don't hear nobody else complain when I do. And they eat it all. Ooh, that looks so good. That looks so good. All right, so I'm going to put these into the bowl. Because that's how I like it. Now, if this isn't done enough for you, you know what I say. Fix it so you like it. Fix it so your family will eat it. If they like it mushy, make it mushy. If they like it firm, make it firm. If they like it really, really crunchy, don't cook it as much. Sometimes we have two vegetables, sometimes we have three. But because I can't eat rice and, you know, a, a lot of uh, high starch foods and things like that, I replace those things with more vegetables. Then I feel like I'm not missing out. And I usually don't eat two potatoes in one meal, especially two sweet potatoes. But I was just trying this out. This is the first time I've made those batatas that way. I made them in the french fries one time. But I've never cooked them in chunks and roasted them in the oven like that. So I was just trying that out and I thought I'd do it on camera with you. Okay, so here's the broccoli all covered. I'm going to put it in the oven 
or sit it on the counter. I don't think I have any more room in the top of it. And the bottom of it is on 450 degrees, and I don't want this broccoli to cook at that temperature. So the next thing I am going to do, I'm not going to wash the pan. I'm just going to, there's a little bit of liquid still in the pan from the broccoli. And I seasoned the broccoli and the cabbage and collards the same way. So I'm just going to put the cabbage and the collards in the same pan. We ain't washing nothing. Nope. If I were to wash this pan, I would be faking the funk, right? Because if I was off camera, I would not wash it. You don't have to. This is all vegetables, right? Check this masala. Ooh, it's bubbling, it's bubbling. It's cooking a little too fast. I had to turn that down. I didn't want that to cook so fast. Okay, so remember I said we had to add some butter to the tiki masala? Well, we gotta do that because I haven't done it yet. So let me cover up cabbage and the collards. There's enough water in there. I can turn this up on high for a few minutes, a couple of minutes, just to really get it going, okay? Let me pull this off the burner and move y'all down here so you can see what's going on. I need a knife or a spoon or something to cut the butter with. See, you can see a little bit of that red, looks like red oil. You can see a little bit of that. And so now I'm going to put in some butter. And we really need to give this a taste, you know. We need to find out where are we. Are we done? Do we need to do something else? Do we need to add something else? Are we good? Are we okay? Let's figure it out. I just want to taste the sauce. I tasted a little piece of the chicken. Mm, uh, mm, 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 mm. <clears throat> wow. Uh huh. That's it. Mm, uh. Okay. All right. So I know exactly what we need. We need some pepper. We need some salt. Other than that, I taste the coriander, the cardamom, the pumpkin spice. I taste all of that. I wish I had a little more of the regular vanilla. I'm kind of scared to use the other one. Some salt. Some pepper. Now, I, I don't mind spice from pepper. I can I can handle it. and y'all are probably saying there's no spice in pepper. What, what, what kind of wimp are you exactly? I'm a big wimp when it comes to, to spicy food. I can't do it. But I do like the spice of pepper. I do like that. Okay, I'm looking for my other spoon. Alright, let me grab one more. I lost the spoon, y'all. Hmm. This is my granddaughter's favorite spoon. I think she likes the gold on there. <laughs> hmm. Ouch. Some of the sauce just splashed on me and burnt me. So we're going to give this a stir and test it again. And see if there's anything else that needs to be done. I, I mean, but at this point, I think we're done. I think we're done. Look at that. Nice thick tomato base for the tiki masala. Let me try this. Let's see how this goes.
<laughs> mm. Wow. Wow. Yeah, wow. That is absolutely. Mm. Mm. And I'm not licking the spoon either. I'm not licking the spoon. I want you to know that I'm not licking the spoon. I don't know why you would surmise that I was, but I'm just telling you, I, I was not licking the spoon just now. And I did not lick the front and the back. I need you to know that. And this is how I like to cook my, my greens and cabbage. Just a little bit of water. Season them well. Spray a little oil on there. Let it soak up for a while. Now I like my cabbage to be pretty done. But we won't overdo it. I assure you. Add a little more water. Because this is going to take a little bit more than the broccoli. Not a lot. Just a little. And like I said, if this was just cabbage I was doing, I would put raisins in there. But because it's collard greens too, I'm not going to put any raisins. Although it would probably still be very, very good, I'm just not going to do it. Because I have the batatas that are sweet, and I have the sweet potatoes that are sweet. And I have what? Still 12 minutes left on the sweet potatoes. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to start to clean. Clean up, clean up. Everybody, everywhere, clean up, clean up. Everybody do your share. Hmm? Okay. So soon. There she blows. So soon. She's almost ready. Now, did I turn off that chicken? I took it off the burner is what I did. I'm going to cover it back up. Put it back on that burner that's still hot, but it's off. We added the butter. I feel like I want to put a little more. I want to put some more fat. I do. Isn't it amazing how... <laughs> I'm just going to speak about me. It's amazing to me how... You know, I have been taught for so long, you got to avoid fat. Stay away from fat. That's going to make your cholesterol go up and um, fat's going to make you fat. Well, yeah, if you're not eating the right fats, number one. But um, I don't really worry about fat when I cook. Yeah, I don't cook with lard and I... Although they say lard is good, I don't cook with that. I don't cook with lard. I don't cook with, uh, I don't use vegetable oil. Um, I use either canola oil. Look it up. Look up canola oil. It's much better than what a lot of people think. But I absolutely do not use vegetable oil. And you all have seen the results. I'm still in the 180. I was 184. I'm 187 now. Okay, so I gained three pounds for the winter. I think we all gained weight in the winter. Okay, so I'm going to cover. As far as I'm concerned, the chicken tiki masala is done. I don't think I have to call it chicken tiki masala, just either butter chicken or tiki masala. And I think in the tiki masala there's chicken in there somewhere, I don't know. I have to find out what the translation is. <laughs> I have no clue. Okay, the cabbage and collards are looking great. They really are. I think I just put, yeah, I put more butter in there. I think we're good. I need a beer. I need a cold beer. I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. I don't need a beer. This is what I need. 
This is a new flavor. Lemon and watermelon. So good. So good. Bought that with my own money. Nobody's paying me to say that. And um, it's good. It's real good. All right. So let me clean up. Let me clean up. I feel like I want to put some more of this vanilla um, essence in it. I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to live dangerous. I'm going to do it. I know this is empty, but there's a few little drops in there. And I'm going to add this vanilla, Laura Ann Butter Vanilla Bakery Emulsion. Let me tell you what the ingredients are. It's water, propylene glycol, artificial flavor, modified, oh Lord, I didn't know that was in there. Oh wait, there is sugar in here. Modified cornstarch, that's not good. Xanthan gum, that's a sweetener. Citric acid, potassium, sorbate, preservative, and that's it. Okay, so the two things I don't like in here are the xanthan gum and the cornstarch, but here's the thing. The, the xanthan gum is the amount of xanthan gum that's in here is so minuscule, they don't have to report it. So it's not that much, okay? And I taste it, and it's really not sweet. Um, I used to use xanthan gum when I first started doing the keto thing. Um, but I didn't like, I think that's the one that made my stomach feel like it was cold or something. It kind of upset my stomach a little bit, and I didn't like that. So hold on, I gotta pay attention. One, two, three, four drops. I mean, four drops. This stuff is pungent. It is very strong. You only need a little bit. What movie is that from? When you, I think the little girl, no, it was a girl, and she says, just a little bit. One of those little corny movies. All right, so let me stir in the butter vanilla emulsion. And we're going to try it one more again. Oh, that cream. Oh, it just looks so good. It looks so good. No, I did not lick the front and the back and the sides of the spoon. I didn't do that. And I need to tell you. All right. Cabbage and collard greens are looking really, really good. Mm -hmm. And we got to taste it. I keep telling y'all, don't bring no food to the table you haven't tasted. And then be embarrassed. Now, because it's just family, you want to tell them you better sit there and eat that food. But imagine you have a dinner party. And you cook all this food and you haven't been tasting it. You gotta taste it. You gotta taste it. You just gotta. And it's time to clean up. Clean up. Ah! I almost spilled all the garlic pepper or the garlic powder in the drawer. I want to get some of those little spice shells that you can put in the drawer 
and they sit, kind of sit up so your spices, like my spices are laying down flat. I want them to kind of sit up like that. But I think that might scrape the bottom of my cooktop. I don't know. I might have to move these to another drawer. But then I got another drawer that has spices. I got two spice drawers. Because we be going hard and paint on spices. We just like, well, I don't know about we, but I know I do. I know I do. Clean up. Concentrate. Get it all put away and cleaned up so my daughter doesn't have such a big mess because you know how it goes. You cook, they clean. They clean, they cook, you clean, right? It don't really be working out like that though because sometimes they cook and then they have to clean because I'd be knocked out at the table. Huh? Did you hear crunch? It really doesn't mean anything, but I think I, I just, I want that onion. I want some onion. I just do. So anyway, oh, I didn't know that was on. Oh man, I can't put the dirty dishes in here because the dishwasher is steaming. I should have turned off the steam feature and then the dishes would have been dry by now, but I didn't know it was on, so. Let it finish steaming. We want those dishes sanitized, don't we? Um, okay, so what we can do is we can just put everything, rinse everything off and put everything together nice and neat. So when the second crew comes on to clean up, everything is not all over the place. You know what I'm saying? I can leave a neat mess. I can leave a neat mess and have the counters wiped down at least. Oh, but then I don't have any wipes. I'm, mm, I got two empty bottles of wipes sitting on the counter. Hey, that's fine. Water pressure so low. Somebody must be either taking a shower or washing some clothes. You know, I heard in the news that um, our current administration wants to make all of our homes electric. No more gas stoves, no more gas heaters, no more gas this, no more gas that. So I, I guess I, I, what I don't understand about that is why they have spent the last two years, especially here in my neighborhood, replacing gas lines with something different, something new, something long and tubular and yellow. Why, why, why invest in putting those in if we're going to switch over to all that? over to electric because, you know, there have been some things that happened in the past with gas and whole populations of people and gas. And these people were taken to get a shower, right? But they got something else. So, but I, 
I, I want to get that. I want to get electric in my home because, you know, I don't want to risk having gas leak into my house. So I want to switch over to electric because that's what I grew up with mostly. Um, I think we had gas water heaters in my mom and dad's home, but the, everything else, the dryer, the stove, everything was electric. So I didn't know anything about gas until I got married and we had an apartment that had a gas stove and I was scared to death of it, you know? I was scared of the gas stove. And when the pilot light would go out, you know, I would want to call the gas company to come light it because I was like, well, if you turn the gas on and you put a match down there, isn't it going to explode? I was just, I was scared. I, 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 I had never, I didn't grow up with that. And the idea of that just scared me. So, I'm coming, but I'm doing something. I'm coming. Shut it up. There you go. So I think we're going to switch over to electricity, especially for the water heater, because they've got this new thing where now here you can convert your gas water heater to electric, and you don't even have to take the gas heater out. You just add this appliance to the gas heater and you're switched over to electric. I'm like, wow. So I have to look more into that and what, what it entails, but I'm sure I would have to call a plumber and an electrician. Maybe an electrician. Yeah, I'd have to call both because the plumber deals with the gas, turning it off. And then the electrician would have to install the electric portion of it. But they say you can do this yourself. You can do this in your own home yourself. But I would rather hire someone so if something goes wrong, you know, I have somebody else's neck to put my hands around. So I think that's what we're going to be aiming for. <laughs> Oh boy, oh boy. And guess what I did? I have cleaned up my YouTube subscription. Yes, I have. I was subscribed to almost 600 people. I wasn't watching that many. A lot of these people made, made a video, made a few videos, and flew the coop. You don't see them anymore. You don't hear from them anymore. Um, but I was subscribed to almost 600 people, and I have reduced my list of subscriptions from 600, almost 600, to about 75 people, and I'm gonna cut that in half too. Because um, sitting and scrolling all day, that's not a good thing. Because if you're sitting and you're scrolling all day, that means you're sitting, first of all. And sitting is problematic, right? So I decided I needed to clean up my social media. And the reason, I'm gonna tell you the real reason why I did it. About two weeks ago, I'm scrolling, right, on these YouTube screens. And I don't watch mainstream media anymore. I mean, today was the first time I watched it in a long time. But I just wanted to see what they had to say, what, you know, what, what, how they're reporting things, right? So normally I get my news from off of small media venues right here on this platform, right? And this one particular platform that does news and some other things, but most of the news, had a headline. And that's kind of how I get my news now. I read headlines. I don't click on the videos. I don't watch the videos because the headlines sometimes are just enough. That's all I need to see. That's all I need to hear. I don't need to, I don't need to hear that somebody else took somebody else out. Haven't we heard enough of that already? I, I've heard enough of it. I've heard enough of it. You know, um, I don't need to keep listening to that. And I think, you know, 
that can have an impact on you, your day-to-day -day life. You know, it can impact your family. It can have an impact on you. And sometimes I think, you know, you have to cut that stuff off. You can't just sit and watch the same thing. You know, watch Karen go into McDonald's and flip out because they put a quarter teaspoon too much of mustard on her sandwich. And she couldn't get a, a McFlurry today. You know, even though this is her fourth one today, she can't get a McFlurry. And so she feels like she needs to go slap somebody because of that. I've seen enough of that. You know? I get it. I understand it. I know who's capable of what, who gets away with what, who doesn't. I don't need to watch it day in and day out. So this one day, when I decided to clean up my subscription, I saw a story on someone's channel, and it was just, that was it. That was it. It was it. It was about a man who deleted his wife. That's the bad part. The worst part is that he did it in front of his eight-year-old daughter. And what was worse than that was that opened up her chest and removed a vital organ, one you cannot live with. He did this in front of his eight-year-old daughter. I was done. I said, I, I can't. I can't. I, I won't. I'm not going to. I was done that day. I'm like, it's bad enough that you murdered, took this woman out. But you had to do that in front of your daughter. You had to do that. Oh, God. You had to, to take. I can't even talk. I think people don't realize the damage they do when they argue and fuss and fight in front of their kids. Because, see, I remember that as a child. And my mom and dad fighting and my dad pulling his pistol out and telling my mom he was going to shoot her. And then my mother's telling him, I'm having a heart attack. I'm having a heart attack. You know, and I'm scared to death because I really think she's having a heart attack. But all the while, she's winking at me. And I'm like... She having a heart attack and, a, and something else, a, 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 an attack or something? Because now she's doing this. But she was trying to tell me she was just joking about the heart attack. She was just trying to get him to chill out or whatever. I don't know. But um, when I saw that headline, I said, well, there's a die. I know I don't have to watch that story. I mean, you done told me everything in the headline. Why would I watch it? But what did I do? I watched it. And it was just as bad, just as worse. It's just looking at the headline. I'm like, why did you do that? Why did you even bother to watch that? You'd already seen the headline. Why? You know, I know some of us have that train wreck mentality sometimes. You want to look, but you don't want to look. But that was just too much. And that's when I decided to clean up my, my subscriptions, get rid of some channels who also report on things like that. Um, you know, we know what's going on in the world. We know what's going on in the world. And here's the thing about that. There's nothing new under the sun. sun. Everything that they're doing now, it's been done before. What I just described about what happened to that lady in front of her daughter, I'm sure that's been done before. There is nothing new under the sun, and I don't need to keep watching it to know it. I don't need to keep watching it to believe it. So, ah, I don't know. I just don't know. And then <laughs> I, I've heard snippets here and there about P. Diddy and T. D. J. I don't know what either one of them have done because I refuse to watch the stories for a number of reasons. 
Number one, it's the same old, same old. They're accusing them of some type of improprieties. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. And we, we, you know, some people do this. They have selective outrage. Where they get mad at somebody like uh, P. Diddy or uh, T.D. Jakes for doing something they shouldn't have done. They get mad about that. But then the rest of the world is allowed to go on and conduct all kinds of filthy acts. Lewd, lascivious acts that in the Bible, Yahweh says are an abomination. But they get to do all that. Going down to the Capitol. That's been going on ever since I was, as, as far as I know, ever since I was a teenager and even before then. Because I wanted to get a job down there as a page and my mother wouldn't let me go. She said, no, you don't, you're not going down there to work. Mm -mm. No. And I couldn't understand why. I thought it was a prestigious kind of a job. I wanted to be a page down at the Capitol. She was like, no, that ain't happening. You know, certain people are allowed to live a lewd and lascivious life and do and commit all kinds of filth and nastiness. And let's see what happens on the 10th of January because isn't that the day when they release all these names that were associated with that guy, Jeff Epstein? Was that his name? The one that uh, offed himself in jail? They're getting ready to release those names on the 10th. I'm like, why y'all waiting until the 10th? What's, 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 you know, we know what's been going on down there for years, in the bathrooms, in those offices, we know. They've been reporting on that for years. Now all of a sudden, you know, but here's the other part of that. Uh, people are making videos. I saw a lady, she was falling out crying this morning because T.D. Jakes was no longer the man she thought he, she, he should be. She was just, oh, she was broken up and she was crying. And she was so hurt, so mad. Who told you to idolize T.D. Jakes? Or any person that walks the face of this earth. Who told you to idolize it in such a way that you would be broken up and crying and boo-hooing and falling out because all of a sudden now you've heard that they have engaged in some type of impropriety. You've heard that they've done something lewd and lascivious. you heard this, you know? But this, that, this ain't the first time we've heard about, you know, people doing these things. But you have to remember who they are and what they're associated with. And we all know that there is a lot of things going on behind the scenes. And I don't mean anything good in the, in, in the entertainment industry, sports, anywhere where there's a lot of money. And then people are paying you, the folks is paying you. You can't have that money just scot-free. <laughs> that comes with some uh, some stipulations, some some uh, some 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 things gonna have to be done. There's gonna be some parties we need you to attend. Oh, you tired? Well, okay, but you're gonna come to this party tonight. You're gonna meet with so and so in a private room, and uh, you're gonna entertain so and so. Oh, you feeling a little under the weather? Oh, your baby mama just had a baby? And you need to be at the house? It's got nothing to do with us. We, we paid you. You signed that contract. And perhaps you did not read the fine print. But you're at their beck and call. And when they call you, you better answer or else you could end up on an island somewhere um, and you can't find your draws. <laughs> that's not funny. Now I know that's not happening. I, I'm just, you know. 
I'm sure that's just something I'm conjuring up in my own head. You know, nobody's doing anything like that. I'm sure of it. About, I don't know, five minutes ago. Now, here's the thing about these sweet potatoes the longer you cook them, the sweeter they get. The longer you cook them, the sweeter they get. Now, my cabbage, and oh, I gotta find a bowl because I still have to. You no, know, I've cooked everything. I'm thinking I gotta cook the broccoli. The broccoli's done. Everything is done. So I guess y'all want me to plate this up, huh? You want to see how I look? But the sweet potatoes still have to be addressed. So let me take those out real quick and show you what's going on. Now, if you cook your sweet potatoes any other way, I want to tell you, you're doing it wrong. I don't care what your mama said. I don't care what your auntie said. I don't care what your grandmama said. If you are not cooking your sweet potatoes this way, you're doing it wrong. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Sweet potatoes. Now what you're going to see that has bubbled up on my sweet potatoes is burnt sugar. And we're going to talk about this in another video. As I said, I have become a sweet potato connoisseur. And I'm going to tell you and show you what you're missing out on by not baking your sweet potatoes just this way. I'm going to show you what you're missing out on. I'm trying to make my mess look neat. That's what I'm trying to do because I can't put these dishes in the dishwasher. And I don't want to stand here and wash dishes, although I like playing in the water. I do. I enjoy playing in the water. And when I have that, this is trash. This is dirty. This is dirty. Okay, so I think that's a little better. We just need to wipe down the counters. But let me show you this sweet potato. But anyway, this lady was booing and crying because her idol had done something bad. And my thing is, you know what? I can, I, I hate to say this. I can look at this lady, but based on something she said, I can look at her and tell she done done some stuff that she don't want nobody to know about. We done all done something. We don't want nobody to know about. We have all done something. I'm no exception. We have all done some things. Okay, I'm telling you right now. But she made this comment. She said, well, he should have been, instead of him being out here doing this and that, he should have been at home uh, getting his sermon together. She said, because what I was thinking about on that day, I was thinking about what I was going to wear to church the next day. And I said, see, that's your problem. <laughs> what difference does it make what you wear to church? Who are you trying to impress? I mean, I know Yahweh says we should come to church and be dressed like kings and queens. I, I, I know what he said. But sometimes I think people put too much emphasis into, you know, all the attire and clothes and all that that they want to sport at church. But I guess what I'm trying to say is we have all fallen short of the glory. And I know some people say, well, I used to do this and I used to do that, but that's not me now. And some people think that because that's not them now, they have the right to go on and talk about somebody, berate somebody, belittle them, chastise them, judge them. Because they're no longer doing what they used to do. So they think it's okay now talk about somebody else's indiscretion. It's not. 
It is not. Okay, so let me tell you about these sweet potatoes. Okay, you see this piece here? That's sugar. And it weighs nothing. It's like tissue paper. It's burnt sugar. Okay? Um, if you catch this at the right time, you can scrape this up, put it in a jar, and you will have what I call sweet potato honey. And I mean, if I could put, if I could eat pancakes, I would be putting that sweet potato honey on my pancakes. If I could eat pancakes, I can't. But if I could, I would. Matter of fact, I'm going to start making my own sweet potato honey to put in my tea because I've eaten some and I didn't have a problem. I did not have a problem. So I might just start making my own sweet potato honey to sweeten my tea. Because right now I drink my tea with no sugar. But it might take a little bit more than what I should be eating. So I probably shouldn't do that. I'm not going to mess around because I don't want to feel sick. I don't want to get sick. But we're going to talk about these things, these sweet potatoes. So you saw me. I just split them in half. We really should let them cool, but I'm trying to get dinner together. Ouch. You really should let them cool. Because of the sugar content, these sweet potatoes are very, very, very hot. And it's very easy for you to get burnt. I split them open and I flip them over like that. And then I dump the contents of the skin right into the pan. Now, let me show you something. You see this right here? That brown part right there, that's the sweet potato, not the skin. That's the candy. That's the prize. That's what you want. That's what you've been missing out on. By boiling them sweet potatoes. Now, I know some people, yeah, they do. They, 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 put, they put their sweet potatoes in the oven and bake them, but you want to bake them for the right amount of time to really get that sugar to caramelize and concentrate. Mm, mm. You really want to get that sugar to caramelize and concentrate in that sweet potato. And you cannot do that boiling sweet potatoes. When you boil sweet potatoes, you wash away all the sugar content, all the natural sugar from that sweet potato gets washed down the sink when you pour that water off. And this is what absolutely hurts me when I see people take sweet potatoes. I'm getting ready to cry right now. When they take sweet potatoes that they have boiled, right? And I saw this lady on YouTube. She has a food truck here where I live. And she took the sweet potatoes and put them in one of those big uh, industrial metal pans and dumped an entire 10-pound bag of sugar on top of the sweet potatoes. Why? Just watch the videos, okay? Watch the videos. Read, read the, the abstracts about what sugar does to the body, okay? Okay. Go without that sugar for two weeks and see how much better you feel in your body, okay? Then start eating it again and see how bad you feel when you start to eat it again. I am burning my fingers on the sugar. I need another pan. I need another pan, but I don't have an... Do, I do have another one, though. Oh, the blue one. The blue one. I got one. I got one. I got one. I spilled some of the sauce from the tiki masala onto this pan, but I need a clean pan. And they're so sticky when you bake them because the sugar has concentrated. I mean, it's just amazing. And I don't use the regular sweet potatoes and yams. I use the Jewel sweet potatoes. Now, the Jewel potato, sweet potatoes are a little bit more expensive. They're anywhere from 
$1.79 a pound to $3.99 a pound, depending on where you buy them at. The same thing with the Okinawan purple sweet potatoes. They can be $3.99 to $4.99 a pound. Very expensive, but well worth the price, I'm telling you. Now, you can, you can make the regular sweet potatoes, and they're still going to be really, really good and really, really sweet. If you cook them the way that I'm going to show you over the next few days when I get the video done. But these jewel sweet potatoes, they're my absolute favorite. My absolute favorite sweet potato. And there's lots of sweet potatoes. You have the Okinawan purple sweet potato. You have the uh, red jewels. That's what these are. These are red jewels. You have the Japanese white sweet potato. You have the batata sweet potato. You have the Stokes purple sweet potato. I don't really care for that. Maybe I didn't get a good one, but I cooked a few of them, and I don't know. Once you've had the Okinawan purple sweet potato, you just you're gonna you're gonna start comparing everything to that, and nothing will compare or meet the standard of a purple Okinawan sweet potato. So you might like the the Stokes purple sweet potato, but once you try that. Um, Okinawan purple sweet potato, you will be jaded and biased. <laughs> Can y'all see what I'm doing? Okay, cool. So I'm trying to pull the skin off without burning myself. But again, and look, you see that the potato was sticking to my fingers because these things are so sweet. There's so much sugar in the potato. And there's so much you can do with these sweet potatoes. And we're going to get into that in a video that I'm going to do. I'd like to get it done tomorrow. And that's why I like doing lives. Because whatever happens on the live, that's what you're going to get. I don't want to edit. That's what you're going to get. That's it. And then I don't have to worry. Well, I got to edit this one before I do the next one. Nope. I'm going to do a live and give it to you raw. Well, Anyway, I don't mean to say it like that, but um, I'm going to give it to you uncut. Put it that way. Oh, they're so hot and they're so sticky. They're sticking to my fingers. And look, let me tell you something. I don't know why these are so difficult to remove the skin. Usually you just cut them and just do give it a shake. One shake like that and they just fall out of the skin. I think maybe I had them in the oven too long, and maybe that's why they're so concentrated with sugar. The skin is sticking to the flesh because they're so sticky right now. And this right here, the part that's stuck to the skin, that is the absolute best part of the sweet potato. That's why I'm not too pressed about cleaning or scraping that off because I trust and believe I'm going to eat this. That's the best part. The sweet potato that gets stuck to the skin is the sweetest part of the sweet potato. Mm. And it's just like eating sweet potato candy. Mm. I have had sweet potatoes every night for almost two months. I couldn't do this before when I was real vitamin D deficient. I don't know what role vitamin D plays in me digesting sweet potatoes, but I could not eat sweet potatoes like this and not end up with really bad cramps. I mean, I, I could have some for like three days, but then I'd have to chill for at least two days before I could have any more. Otherwise, I'm screaming on the floor, I'm crying, I, I got these muscle cramps in my legs, and it was bad. But it was like once I got my vitamin D level up, you know, I'm able to eat sweet potatoes and it's not a problem anymore. Thanks to eating. Yahweh, goodness gracious, that was awful. That was really, really awful. Very painful. Ooh wee. So I'm gonna show you what I do with the sweet potatoes once they fall out of the skin. This is the first time I've done this and they have stuck to the skin like that. And I got, you know, I'm trying to move the camera and do this and do that. So they stayed in the oven a little bit longer than what I wanted them to. 
an hour and 50 minutes is really all you need to do. And I think they were in the oven for like at least two hours and 30 minutes. I just want to make sure this is not skin because I don't want to eat the skin and take off the little top part of the sweet potato. But this part right here, this brown, that's that's all sugar, honey. We're going to leave that there. We're not taking that off. Mm. Mm. So amazing. All right, so it's all out the skin, right? I mash it. I cut it. And then I drop some on the floor. And now I'm mad because I dropped some on the floor. All right, we're not adding any butter. We're not adding any sugar. I'm gonna show you what I do. You too can do this, and I promise you, you will wanna slap your mama's dog, because I know you ain't gonna slap your mama. You will wanna slap your mama's dog once you try this, okay? Now, I think I put my spoon in the sink, so we'll use one of these. What you're gonna need is, your pumpkin spice, you're gonna need some vanilla, and I don't have any more. I use vanilla as a base for my confections. That's just the base flavor, the vanilla. And then I'll throw in something else, you know, to go along with it. Now, I don't have any more of the vanilla by McCormick, so, what we're going to do is we're going to use the other emulsion by Laura Ann. And this is butter and vanilla. And again, I'm telling you, use a few drops and no more. This stuff is so potent. Okay? And it's, it's syrupy. It's thick. So... One, two, that's three drops I put in there of the butter and vanilla. And then I'm going to put in three drops of the raspberry, right? Oh, it smells so good. It smells so good. One, two, that's it. Don't put any more. Don't put any more in here. I'm telling you, this stuff is potent, and you will not be happy with how strong the flavor is if you put too much. So I just take it, and I stir it up, and it's like mashed sweet potato. Now, if you want this to be pretty, I don't have to have it pretty. I like mine with little chunks and creaminess, chunks, creaminess. You can take this, add just a little bit of cream to it, all right? Or you can add a little bit of, let me show you what I use. See, I'm giving away some of my secrets before I want to. But if you want this to be creamy and not look like mashed potatoes or rough mashed potatoes, get some of the Pilar's kefir, okay? No sugar added pre and probiotics. Add a little bit of this, put it on your food processor with the sweet potato, and you will have a smooth and creamy dessert. Very smooth and creamy. Now, if you want it smooth and creamy and you want it to look real pretty and, you know, velvety and thick and pudding-like, then do it that way. Otherwise, this is what I do every night. Just about. Okay? I mix in the extract, and this is going to go back in the oven for 20 minutes, all right? And then I will turn it again with a spoon and put it back in the oven for another 20 minutes. Now, I'm not going to be here that long. I'm just telling you what I do because we will go over this and a lot of other things in another video I'm going to be doing. Now, this is the pumpkin spice. I'm going to add some of this, right? Mix it together. 
mix it all together. And like I said, if you don't like it the way it looks like this, put it in your food processor. Make it nice and smooth and creamy. And it'll look like a pudding or an ice cream or a soft serve ice cream, right? But I like it just like this. Don't waste none. Don't waste any. This is really good. Mm. And you want to cook it because you want to put it a little while longer for two reasons. Number one, you want to burn off any alcohol that has been used with the extract because if you have used a little too much extract and you don't burn off that alcohol, it's going to taste like rubbing alcohol, right? So you need to burn that off or cook that off in the oven. I'm going to eat this. Yes, I am. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Mm. Wow. Mm. And look, if you don't want to do the extract, and the pumpkin spice, you don't have to. Sweet potatoes have their own unique taste and flavor. And they have plenty of sugar in there that you don't have to add a thing. I didn't have to do this. I could have just eaten it just like that. It's just that good. If you cook your sweet potatoes the right way, it's just that good. So the oven is still set on 450. I'm going to set a timer for 20 minutes. Oops. Off. Off, bake, 450, and start, and then timer for 20 minutes, start. That's it. Dinner's ready. I'll show you what it looks like. Hang on. Let me just clean up this mess right here. No, because there's still sweet potato on these skins, and I'm going to eat them. Hold on. Mmm. Mm. Okay. I'm telling you, the best part of the sweet potato is what is stuck to the skin. And I'm going to eat it. These are not going in the trash till I clean these skin. So I'm just going to sit this over here. Because um, sweet potatoes are a hot commodity in my house, okay? I be charging people at the dinner table. Okay, you can get a... You can get a a half a tablespoon for $75. But because you family, $76. Get your tablespoon. I'll serve you. They are a hot commodity here. I don't think my family likes them as much as I do because not everybody eats them as often as I do. And I'd be, the whole, I'd be so happy when I'm the only one because I always ask, you want some sweet potatoes? They'd be like, no, I'm good. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> but no, I like to see people enjoy themselves when they eat. So, you know, I'm, I, I try to make enough so that if somebody else does want some, if someone else does want some, it won't impact me because I will have already had my fill. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? I'm saying what I'm doing. That's all. I'm just saying what I'm doing. Okay, so let me turn the camera around. Where are we? Where are we? We're right here. Hello. Okay. Mm, more sweet potato. Mm. I'm sorry. I'm all up in y'all face. <laughs> it's so good. Amazing. All right, so I left a clean pile. Well, not a clean pile, but I left a neat pile of dishes for the next year. Because after that, I'm getting in bed. I am tired. I'm tired. But you know what? Even though I'm tired, I got about 
two loads of clothes to fold, and I'm gonna go upstairs and fold them right after I finish eating. I'm lying. <laughs> I'm gonna eat my dinner, and then I'm gonna fall asleep, and then I'll wake back up and fold those clothes. That's my MO. That's how I operate. That's how I get down. I pass right out of the dinner table. Okay, I left a neat pile. I left a neat pile of dirty dishes. I could put them in the sink and soak them. Some of them need to be soaked, some of them don't. That used to be my excuse as a child. Did you wash those dishes yet? They soaking! They got to soak. Go upstairs and get in the bed. Come downstairs, my mom come downstairs in the morning. She's like, this girl did not wash these dishes. And so she would wash them. If I was her, I'd have snatched the covers off of me in the middle of the night. And I would have made me go downstairs and wash the dishes. I ain't never did that to none of my kids. And I'm glad it wasn't done to me. Because that would have been real hurtful. My pride would have been hurt real bad if somebody had done that to me. But anyway. Any boosters, we put these collard greens back. Cause I didn't feel like cooking all of that. And I went to the store today and I had a list of what I needed. And one of the things was some more wipes. I bought a four pack of wipes. We go through wipes like I don't know what. And sometimes I be wondering, do I really need to keep buying the things? Cause we wipe stuff down and we throw them away. That's like throwing money away, you know? And I really don't like using a rag because then I got to wash that rag. And I don't want to keep using a rag that I've been using over and over and over again. So I buy wipes. But it's just like throwing money away, you know? I don't want to do that. I don't want to be wasteful. I want to be clean and efficient, but not wasteful. All right. Let me just wipe down this counter over here, and I will plate up a little plate. Because, see, I'm tired now. And when I get tired, I don't really want to eat. another onion that I peeled and I didn't use it and I said I wanted some onion in my cabbage and collard greens. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take those cabbages and collard greens, put them in a bowl, right? And then I'm going to fry this onion in the pan and then just pour them on top of the cabbage and collard greens. Why don't we just do that? Huh? Why don't we do that? And do I have another bowl? I think I do. I'll use this. Let me turn y'all down so y'all can see what's going on. I am so sorry. I have not looked at the screen. Hold on. Oh, look at the comments. I'm so sorry. Happy belated birthday. Look at look at marvelous. We were going to show my brand. Chosen. Oh, you like that? <laughs> the sprays are also only one that doesn't use chemical prop Okay. Amen for the health report. Thank you. And who is PB Lee? What's up, PB Lee? Miss Stop Drop and Roll One. Hello. Miss PB Lee. Hello. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, y'all. I just be in the zone when I be in here cooking. And, you know, you saw I had a number of things going on. And when I have a lot of things going on, I got to, you know, try to stay focused a little bit. Because I'm not one of those people who can chew gum and walk at the same time. I just can't. It's not going to go good. It's just, it's just not. It's not. Okay. Um, hold on. Let's see. Who else? P.B. Lee says, happy birthday. 
Happy New Year. Thank you, Miss Lee. Thank you. Happy New Year to you, too. Um, wait, Pam what? Pam cooking spray uses propane. Yeah, I haven't used Pam since the 70s. Yeah. Oh, ladies, thank you so much for sticking in here with me and hanging out with me and commenting. I appreciate you. I do. I really do. I miss y'all, but I love seeing you when I see you, whether it's here or on your channel. You know, life be lifing. I get it. I understand. I ain't pushing. I'm not pressuring nobody. Okay, when people get ready to do what they're going to do, they don't know it. And I don't have to ask or beg or plead or nothing. You know, people got to live their life. They got to do what they got to do. You know, and I understand. Okay, this is the collard green call. So here's my collars. Let me turn the phone down so you can see. Okay, you can see, right? Okay. So here's the cabbage and the collard greens. And you know what really been good in here, but I can't get them this time of year. And I, they just won't bring them to the market. They will not bring any green tomatoes to the market. I'm like, just bring some tomatoes that aren't ripened yet. What's the problem? This would have been really good with some green tomato in it. I've made it that way before, and it's so good. I think they call that chow chow. But this was really good. I tasted it already. It's well seasoned. It's good. It's really good. I need another bowl. Otherwise, I won't be able to put the top on there. Bear with, bear with. Have you all seen, if you all haven't seen this show called Miranda, you need to go check it out. I think it's on BritBox, if you have BritBox. If you don't have BrickBox, I believe it's on Hulu. But the show is called Miranda. M-I-R-A-N-D-A. -A, Miranda. Go watch that show. <laughs> it is so funny to me. She's a comedian. And the first time I saw her was on the, the series called Call the Midwife. That's where I first saw her at. And then I found out she had been given... I think she had three or four seasons, maybe. She's really funny. She is really, really funny. But um, I love that show. I do. So check out Miranda if you're looking for something to watch. You know, certain English comedies I like. Like, I used to watch Benny Hill when I was a kid. But I like Miranda, and I like... Um, who's the lady that's always giving the dinner parties? Uh... What's it called? Keeping up appearances? You gotta watch that. It's so, it's so tongue in cheek, but sometimes you can really get a good guffaw, a good laugh watching that show. But those are my two across over the pond shows that I really like. Besides um Call the Midwife. And I like I like the first two or was it the first two seasons of Downton Abbey? I like that too. But that's about it. That's about it. But anyway, let me put this. If you haven't tried the kefir, try the kefir. And I'm going to be showing you some things with this. Um, sometime, hopefully before, well, tomorrow is Thursday. Hopefully before Monday. Because I got, the next few days are really busy for me. So I might not be able to get on here and make the videos I want to make, but I'm going to really try and do this other one tomorrow where we're going to talk about some other things. Good to eat. Good to eat. All right, so what do we have? We have broccoli. We have cabbage and collard greens. We have the tiki masala, which I'm going to bring over there. Oh, my Lord. How did that happen? Oh, that was a sweet potato. Doggone it. I spilled some sweet potato on the floor and then I stepped it. No, no, no. That's nasty. Okay. Let me 
me just get a napkin and wipe this up. So now I got to mop the floor. You know, when I was young, I used to walk around barefooted all the time. The moment I walked in the house, I would pull off. Well, I ain't going to tell you everything I used to pull off. But <laughs> I, used, I used to pull off my shoes. The moment I walked in the door, right? And it's like now, if I try to walk around with no shoes on, I feel like I'm walking on bones. It's like I don't have any meat on the bottom of my feet. That's what it feels like. But my son bought all of us these shoes in different colors. My husband got black. Um, I got a purple and a pink pair, and my daughter has, actually these were my daughters because she likes blue. See this shoe right here? It's foam. Well, not, I don't know. It's plastic. I don't know what it is, but it's super soft. And I guess it has done something to my feet where I, I can't walk barefoot anymore. It just, I don't know. It's not comfortable. But I love wearing those little foam slippers. They feel so good and my feet feel cushioned. And I'm just washing my hands so I can continue on since I picked up that shoe off the floor. Okay. So we got the tiki masala there. The sweet potatoes. The timer went off, but I didn't hear it go off. That's, that's the thing about this oven. The timer will go off and the bell won't ring. I don't know what's up with that. Uh oh. Almost broke that. Okay, so here's the sweet potatoes. And like I said, I let them cook for 20 minutes, right? And after they cook for that 20 minutes, I give them a stir and I put them back in the oven. All this is doing is concentrating the sugar. And they get real thick and gooey and chewy and not really so much chewy, but it's, uh, it's thick. It thickens. The sugar concentrates. And it just gets even more sweeter. And I can smell, I don't smell the vanilla butter, but I smell that raspberry. That raspberry is really, really strong. But the taste is mild. You know it's there. But it's so good. Y'all got to cook your sweet potatoes like this. Okay? And like I said, even if you don't add the, um, the emulsions or the extracts or the um, pumpkin spice, um, it's, it's good just like this by itself. It is really good just like this by itself. And this is one way to have a nice dessert. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not standing here licking a knife. Nope, not doing it. Um, this will make a nice dessert, and if you have any sensitivities to sugar, um, this will be a good sweet treat for you. I just lost my oven mitts, and I'm, oh, here it is. This will make a nice sweet treat because I dropped that one on the floor. There's no added sugar except for what was in the emulsion. And like I said, the what they add to the emulsion is so little, it's, it's nominal, right? And because of that, they don't even have to report it from what I heard, okay? From what they be saying, from those that be saying stuff, okay? All right, so what I'm gonna do is, let me grab a plate. A little plate. This is a salad plate. What did I do with the batatas? I put those back in the oven, didn't I? I sure did. Is it hot? Oh, yeah, it's hot. But not too hot. Alright, so because I can't have rice, I wanted something starchy. And really good to be under 
Y'all, I need a drink. Is this still good? Mm -hmm. I needed something starchy to put. Emergency. What time is it? It's 11.19. He'll call my daughter. He'll call my daughter if it's really important. Okay. Mm. So like I was saying, I wanted something really starchy underneath my tiki masala. trying to call me. I didn't want to end the live until I did this. I wanted to, wanted my daughter to call him because he called me a couple of times. Where is my charger? Who took my charger? I just had my, where? Okay. Y'all, I'm going to come back and make another video of me plating up the food. I appreciate y'all stopping by and sticking with me. But I got to call my son and make sure that he's okay. He don't normally call me this late. Um, so I don't know where the charger is to charge her phone so I could call him on her phone. Here it is. <clears throat> she was going to use her charger. Her, and her charger takes like five minutes. My charger takes like 30 seconds. Some most of the time. So let me see. I can get this charged in like 60 seconds or less. If not, I'm going to have to end the live. But I think if it was really something important, he would have also called my husband too. So my husband hasn't said anything. So I think so we're okay. Because he would have called my husband. 